Okay, we're gonna we're gonna start, everyone. Is here. We're gonna start just because I know we have only 45 minutes because there's a class at 9:45. So we're gonna go things through pretty quickly. But I'm gonna stay. Like I'm after that, I'm gonna stay. And if you have questions to ask me personally or whatever, that I can definitely help you with those. It's just we have a lot of things. Like we're gonna touch on a lot of different things. Um, anyway, uh, most of you know me. I've probably worked out with all of you on <laughs> Kathy's blog at different times of the day. Um, I started this kind of quest for nutrition knowledge. Gosh, when my daughter was born 14 years ago, I just couldn't believe the amount of crappy food that was out there to feed, you know, your little kids and stuff. And I just, I've always been interested in it. And then when we moved to Texas six years ago, I decided to go back to school and actually do something about it. So I graduated from the Canadian School of Holistic Nutrition uh, a year and a half ago, and I've just been doing some consulting work since. Um, so it is a real passion of mine just to, you know, get people back to eating healthy, whole foods. Um, and the biggest part is that everybody, everybody's body is different. So what one person may be eating is good for them, may not be good for what your body is. Um, it could be, you know, you could have diabetes or thyroid issues or women's hormonal health issues. So, you know, what's good for one is not going to be good for the other. So that's where, you know, you read a lot of these fad diets and you think it's, why isn't working for me? Because maybe there's something else going on in your body. So, I mean, bear with me. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I can't move closer because Ray's got this, you know, Ray's got this thing set up. And I'm like, well, I didn't come there, but he's got this, if I move there, then the camera, the camera doesn't work. So, I think he was expecting people to sit on the floor or something, I don't know. So, so bear with me here. Okay, I won't go back. Okay, start over from the beginning. Where is that? So, <laughs> sorry, I'm trying to get this camera thing. I'm not used to this whole setup thing, so bear with me on that. Um, so this presentation is really just on some things that you can do, um, general things that you can do just to help improve your health over the year. If you're like constantly in this battle, I'm always not feeling well, I'm tired, I, my digestion doesn't work, you know, I, my thyroid still isn't working. Um, this is kind of touching on a little bit of things, but everyone's got, you know, there's certain things that that'll be individual to you. Um, so what is our is your body is it's always looking for homostasis, which is to be in a constant balance. You have your body needs a pH of 7.2. Right, for all your body functions to work. Um, so what it's doing, as you're eating things throughout the day, your body's constantly trying to balance your blood pH level. So if you're eating acidic foods, coffee being one, red meat, processed foods, I like coffee, there's nothing against it, <laughs> acidic foods, all that, uh, <laughs> your body is constantly trying to, it's buffering. So your body's gonna constantly try, try and get alkaline things out of your body to, to, to buffer the acidic, the, so I'm gonna use coffee as an example. Uh, so what you're going to do, if you've ever had the shakes after drinking too much coffee, it's because your body's actually pulling calcium and magnesium from your body to buff your blood pH. So that's why you get those shakes. So you don't have enough magnesium. It's actually depleting your body of magnesium. So if you're drinking a lot of coffee and you're taking your magnesium supplement, you know, you're not, you're not really doing your body much good. One's depleting the other very quickly. Uh, the other thing um, for constantly uh, things that threaten your, your body pH is toxins, pesticides, herbicides, food chemicals, sugar, salt, trans fats, nicotine, alcohol. All of those things we've all had. Those are things, and those are things we're trying to eliminate or reduce um, for your body. So the unbalanced body results in free radicals gathering your body, but it's missing molecules attacking healthy cells a lot way. So too many free radicals in your body mean sickness, disease, poor health. Bear with me, this is a little on the, oops. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> so what we're trying to do, what you're, you're often you're trying to do is by eating more alkaline foods. Um, anything that's healthy, whole foods, not processed, you're trying to make this a better balance. So some of the things you can do, uh, first is detox or cleanse. So why detox? 
Well, your body, on average, carries 700 toxins at any given time. That's from things you eat, those are things that are outside, external. Um, so the outside toxins are you constantly, you're inhaling them, you swallow them through your food, through the water supply, you're absorbing them through your skin, through like creams or detergents, things even like, like through your detergents, things you're sleeping in your sheets, those are all toxins that are being absorbed through your skin. Then inside, by eating unclean food, meaning processed food, you're burning, um, you're getting metabolic toxins. So your body's constantly trying to get rid of those toxins because you're not burning them cleanly. Um, it just creates a lot of waste um, because your body is not able to digest the processed foods. So there's different ways to detox. And ideally you should do a detox at least twice a year. Usually they say spring and fall, kind of clean, clean things out. Um, you can do a juice fast. There's, there's all kinds of detox supplements out there. There's gentle cleanses, um, meaning just like drinking lemon water with chlorophyll every day for, for a week is a good liver one. Um, Elimination diets probably works the best because eliminating those uh, high allergen foods. Uh, dry skin brushing helps your lymphatic system. And castor oil packs, uh, castor oil placed on any part of your body will draw toxins out of it. Whether it's your liver, doing a liver detox, if you have really sore joints, you can put the castor oil right on your joints that will actually pull out of toxins and inflammation out. Yeah. So castor oil is one of the really, it's a great one to use. But, we well, have to know too again because everybody is different. Like if so, if you're if you have hypoglycemia, like you have really low blood sugar all the time, doing a juice fast is not going to be good for you because you don't need to. Be, you should be drinking juice 24/7 for two days. So again, it comes down to what your body is like. You know, you may not. And if you have digestive problems, you definitely you know doing a really hardcore detox may not be the best thing right up front. You may have to gently go. You know, start eliminating foods before you get to a, a deeper cleanse. Um, and if you are ready for a digestive cleanse, I will tell you that Ray has a great, <laughs> I did one, that great package by, what's it called? Health Force. Health Force. And it's a seven day digestive detox. Um, it's a lot of pills to take. If you're thinking like you're just like overdosing on things, but if you have any digestive issues, it works fantastic. We'll get back to that a little bit more too. Then of course, just by eating clean food, that's these are all you know, natural detox. Detox is just well. Oh, sorry, this is just very sensitive. Okay, so talking about so detoxing, the biggest thing you want to detox is your digestive system. Because your digestive system, everyone just thinks it's literally you know in your stomach and out the other end. It's not quite. It's not, not quite like that. Um, your digestive system is your digestion, your absorption of minerals, and your excretion of waste. If any of those aren't working, you're going to build up the toxins in your system, and your body is not assimilating vitamins and minerals properly. Uh, things that you might notice, even in your kids, that their digestion's not work properly. Um, if they have allergies, and then they have allergic shiners, those big black spots you see a lot of people have on your eyes, that's a signal that digestion's not working properly. Uh, asthma. Disorder, colic, constipation, diarrhea, ear infections, eczema, diabetes, obesity, candida. Yeast is a big one if your digestion's not working. You got too much, you're eating too much sugar. Um, headaches, migraines, weight gain. These are all things that are signals that your digestion is off. So what happens then is, you know, if you're eating foods that your body um, perceives as like an invader in your system. What it, what it does is that your, your digestion isn't, isn't working properly. You're actually, um, large like protein particles are getting through your intestinal wall into your blood system, and then your body perceives that as a foreign, something foreign because it isn't digested. And at that point, it causes, undigested particles cause mass inflammation in your body. And that inflammation can be in the form of um, allergy, fatigue, irritability, asthma, migraines, joint pain, headaches. Joint pain, I think, is one of the biggest ones. People realize, you know, my knees hurt all the time, my ankles hurt, my, you know, everything hurts. And by just cleaning your digestion, digestion, it can actually improve those immensely. And I've done it myself. I've done the 30-day, no grains, and, like, amazingly, like, my knees didn't hurt anymore. So just get a lot of um, just metabolic toxins pulled in, you know, so by, and that's, that's because of your digestion. 
the other thing that people don't realize too is that depression is a, is a big sign of digestive health. And you're like, well, how does digestion and, you know, and depression go hand in hand? <laughs> well, actually, 75% of your serotonin is produced in your gut. So if your digestion is off and you're not processing things properly, then you're not producing serotonin. And that serotonin is needed, obviously, to make you <laughs> to keep you a little happier than you are. So you know, so if you're trying a lot of things for depression, um, that's just one thing that you can try is looking at you know how your digestion is working properly. Um, so, so, so some things you can you can just do quickly to to see you know how you are about your digestive system. Um, eating fruit alone, a lot of people will eat fruit with, with part of their meal or after their meal. Problem with that, after a meal, um, because fruit digests really quickly and proteins and starches don't, it'll actually sit in your stomach and it will actually, actually ferment the foods that are in your stomach. So, so eating fruit separately will actually be a bit, much cleaner option to do that. Um, eat your last meal by six or seven. Now, I know some people that's impossible because of their, you know, their work schedule, their kids' schedule, whichever. But if you can even, if that's a problem, then try to make your, your big meal at lunchtime and you have something smaller and then if you do need to eat um, in the evenings just make sure, like before bed make sure it's you know it's a, it's a very easily digestible food when you say don't eat the fruit with the meal mm -hmm. my husband likes to eat like an apple like almost like 20 minutes after he eats yeah. dinner he's like you have the apples whatever is that too close to the meal? It, it, it is because it your protein, is. it is. But if, and again, it's, it depends. If he is not having any digestive issues and it can process that, okay. Then, you know, I've heard people say, well, I have no, it's, it's okay. But generally, if you're, if you're looking at it and you're having, you know, you're having, I can't lose weight, I can't do this, I can't do that, then start looking at how I'm eating, you know. And it's actually more clean to eat the fruit, you know, have it 20 minutes before his meal. Oh, four. Okay. Right, because then it's going to process that much quicker. I see. So. That's, it's just a better idea okay. for that. Um, and then, I know it sounds funny, but chewing your food well. I tell you, most of us do not eat. We are such, such in a rush, we don't chew our food. And the problem with that, especially with um, your carbohydrates, the digestion starts in the mouth um, with the saliva. And so if you're not chewing it properly, you're actually getting whole particles going through your digestive system, taking that much longer to digest. So next time you eat, honestly, think about it, and I'm guilty of it. Think about how many times you're chewing something, and whether you're like, you know, leaving in big pieces or you're actually like chewing it a lot. And it's you'll you'll be, you'll actually be amazed at yourself <laughs> how fast you're doing that. Um, slowing down. You need to take at least 20 minutes to eat. I know everyone's laughing. I don't have 20 minutes to eat. I have kids. <laughs> I know how it is. But um, it actually does take that 20 minutes for your brain to know that you're full. Um, and then. The last thing that one other is pay attention to your frequency of your bowel movements. Uh, you should have at minimum one a day. Two is a, is a lot better. Um, if you're not having one a day, then you definitely have digestive issues and constipation issues, and you need to look at those things. Um, I know a lot of people have met have said, oh, I go once every other day. It's not really acceptable. You need to make sure it's at least once a day, two, twice a day is better. Um, adding probiotics to your daily supplements. Um, you should be doing this regardless, and you can take them. You can take them with food. You can take them without food. Um, preferably, you want it like a multi-strain probiotic, and make sure um, that every every other time you buy them, buy a different one, so your body doesn't get used to the same one all the time. So you're mixing it up. So just, even if it's just a different brand that's got a slightly different strain in it, you buy like so. You say you buy them once a month. So next month, buy a slightly different one. Um, and it'll just be better for bacteria in your system. Um, increase your fiber. If you're having problems you know, with digestion, go to the bathroom, increase your fiber. Um, the only thing I wouldn't suggest is the psyllium fiber, because psyllium fiber actually will absorb 40 times its weight in water in your stomach, in your intestines, sorry, and um, that can just cause, actually cause constipation if you're, not, if, you're not, if, you're, if you're not drinking enough water, but it will actually absorb in your intestines. Um, and then eating whole foods, eating foods that aren't processed will help your digestion uh, work much quicker because your body is able to assimilate them better. Oh, and the last one, sorry, I didn't put it up there, but it's a big one. Don't drink water with your meals. Don't drink anything with your meals. <laughs> um, 
the biggest thing you do if you ever go out for dinner, they give you this big glass of water full of ice, like ice water, with your meal. Problem is, is that you're diluting all your digestive enzymes. So all the enzymes that are being produced, as soon as you start eating, you, you start, your body starts producing all these enzymes. Um, by drinking water, you're actually flushing the enzymes out of your system. And, the, and then the cold, and then because it's cold, it's actually like freezing your digestive organs. So if you're going to drink anything, I know everyone's like, I always drink cold, ice cold water, especially in the summertime, <laughs> right? <laughs> Why it's okay. No. <laughs> I've um, heard it from Kathy. You heard it. That's it. No. Um, so if you're gonna drink something, I know it's hard because you know you want to listen. If, you know, if you're gonna drink some room temperature water with, with your meals, uh, then I'm talking. You know, I mean, we're not drinking wine every meal. <laughs> That's okay. But the water is like you know you're drinking. You know, I've seen it. You're, you're drinking you know gallons of water with your meal, and it's ice cold water. So you're really not doing your digestive system any you good. Drink like, you can drink it after, yeah, but I would wait at least 30 minutes after before you drink more water. Or drink, you know, drink a lot of water before your meal, um, which will help, you know. And the other thing you will help fill you up too, um, you could also take, some, if, if you're feeling your digestive is not working great too, you could either try um, some digestive enzymes as well if you're having trouble breaking certain, like, proteins down, digestive enzymes before your meal, or even, like, a, a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. That just helps start the digestive process. I would say like, I mean, 20, 30 minutes, I mean, you're fine. It's just helping cleanse things. But uh, during your meal, you're actually washing all your digestive enzymes out. So I can grab the water after Yeah, <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah, and if you can avoid the ice cold water, um, if it, you know, ask for it without ice. I know that's tough sometimes, but... If you ask for it without ice, it'll it'll do much better for you. I know it's hard in you know, Texas heat and you just want an ice cold drink. Is that how some cultures hot tea? Yeah, well, I mean, the hot teas that they drink too, um, literally just produces in hot countries. You think it's, it's crazy, but in the hottest countries, they drink hot liquids all the time, and it actually helps them sweat to keep their bodies cool. It's the opposite, right? So you think. Gosh, it's 100 degrees. I don't like hot tea, but it actually produces the sweating, cooling you down. So yeah, it's crazy, but so so then on to the next point, which I know Rainy tell you all the time. And what about like uh, my dad has always eaten his salad last. He thinks that supposedly helps digest <laughs> to eat the. the uh, it, it's not going to help. It, it, it's not going to help because if you look at <laughs> if you look at the foods, right? You got your 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 like I mean things like veggies are, are digested really quickly. Your proteins take the longest to digest, and then your, your, well, your you've got your carbs and your proteins take your longest, and they all digest at different points. Um, your protein starts digestion in your stomach. The stomach with the stomach acid starts that process. Your carbs actually start digesting in your mouth, but then they finish in the small intestine. So you actually too, if you if you're having problems, people if you're eating your proteins and starches together, you're slowing down your digestion completely. So again, you can if you eat just for a meal, ideally if you just eat your protein with your veggies or your starches or carbs with us with your veggies and not mixing the protein and the starches, will it improve your digestion? So no, eating your salad after isn't I mean, I think mentally maybe it's cleansing. Well, you may <laughs> but, be thinking because of the vinegar, maybe, because that, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. so, so I know, in different it, cultures. It's not bad for them to do it. It's just, yeah. No, I mean, they're bad. Yeah, it's not the, the veggies. It would be the, having the fruit after that would cause more problems. But, um, so water. I constantly hear two people here, I need to drink more water. I'm trying to, I'm only drinking two glasses a day. And, your body just dehydrates. Your body just dehydrates so quickly, especially if you're working out. Um, tea's not going to help you. Coffee's not going to help you. Pure water is going to help you. Uh, so herbal if you, tea count. what's that? Does herbal tea. Count? Yeah, there's not a lot in herbal tea, but I don't know how much herbal tea you're going to drink. You're probably not going to drink like two liters of herbal tea a day. Maybe you do. I don't know. <laughs> He's like, I could. I gave up coffee, so I took a lot of coffee. Yeah, we'll talk after. We all know my, my six week resolution is no caffeine for six weeks. So, yes, yeah. I know. Everyone's like, wow. Um, so, water, just some things. Water, I mean, it's just help, you know, it's not just for thirst. 
here's some things. I love this uh, slide that I found. You know, it helps form saliva, keeps all your, mem mem your membranes moist, and that's really important this time of year when it, the heat's on and you're just drying out. And if your nose is, all these membranes are really dry, that's when viruses are going to get into your body. So if you have, um, you know, if you're drinking more water, you're just less chance of getting sick. Um, allows body cells to grow, produce, survive, flushes body waste, um, lubricates your joints. It's a major component of almost all your cells in your body. Um, it's needed by the brain to manufacture hormones and neurotransmitters, regulate your body temperature so that's sweating. Again, if you're sweating, you need to be taking in more water. Uh, acts as a shock absorber for your brain is not on board. It converts food to components needed for survival and digestion. It helps deliver oxygen all over the body. So it really is vital. And then, of course, the quality of water that you're drinking. If you're just drinking regular tap water that filtered all the time, you're actually you know, putting a lot of toxins into your body. So the carbon block filter is probably one of the better ones. Do you know what? It depends what kind of bottled water. If you go out there, you've got you know, the bottled water that's from a, it says from a municipal water source. So really, it's just tap water. That's all you're, that's all you're drinking. Um, spring water is your best option, right? Because it actually is coming, it's not processed anyway, it's coming from a natural spring. You're gonna get other minerals in it. Um, if you get the carbon block one, it, I mean, it's gonna filter out a lot of chemicals that you know, the, that get put in your water supply. Um, one of the biggest problems is, is the amount of chlorine that's put into the water supply, and that actually affects your thyroid as well. So if you can filter your water. So your refrigerator filter is Carbon filter, right. Yeah, so you try, yeah, so you just want to drink the best quality water that, that you can get. Um, now, the other part, I mean, if you're doing a detox, if you're on um, a de any sort of detox plan, drinking um, distilled water for that week is really good um, because it actually, because there's no minerals at all in it, it'll actually help pull toxins out of your body. Um, but you don't want to drink it all the time because then you're, you know, it's, it's, it's acidic. But for a detox, it does help pull the toxins. Out of your body, and you can get distilled water at you know, any grocery store. Yeah, and the problem, sorry, the bad problem with the bottled water is that you've got the risk of EPA in the plastic. You know, and then you see people like leave their cases of water in the car on a hot day. You know, and then you know that plastic's leaching chemicals into your water. So if you can, I mean, and plus environmentally, if you have your own water bottle, I mean, I know we're all guilty. We all have water bottles. You know, cases of water bottles. We need them sometimes, but. You're ideally better off you know, filling your own water bottle. Sorry, I'm not. I'm not judging anybody. <laughs> got, there's no judge. There, you see that? They all hit their water bottles. <laughs> they all hit their water bottles. We're all guilty. It's okay. I'm just saying, you know, I'm going. So, I have a good faster diet. This is one of the things I've been uh, looking at. Some people's. Uh, uh, my fitness pals, and I, I don't look at their names, I've just been looking to see what people, and the biggest thing Ray and Amy told me, and some of the other trainers, is that people are afraid to eat fat. Like, they go through and they're afraid to eat anything that's got fats in it, uh, which is actually making you sicker and not able to lose weight. I mean, people are terrified of, of fat. So, basically, I said not all fats are great people. The good fats are essential for the absorption of vitamin A, D, E, and K, for positive growth and energy production. So if you're not eating any kind of fat, you're not able to absorb those fats all your vitamins. So you're taking your vitamin D, not absorbing it. Uh, essential uh, good fats, we need those for hormone balance. We need them for energy storage. Uh, they're an essential part of all cell, the cell membranes. Yeah, they're essential for uh, proper neurological development, especially in kids. In little kids, up to like two years old, they need a they need a high fat diet. People are afraid that their babies are fat. Fat babies are good. <laughs> they should be. They should be. They should be fat. Yeah. <laughs> they are. They should be. They need. You know. You see. They, they need the fat for brain development. <laughs> I shouldn't say they're fat. You know what I'm talking about. They're just. Yes. My daughter had like these. I mean, she's. You wouldn't think it now, but she's. She had these like little Michelin. I call them Michelin yes. fats. Like the rolls and rolls of fat. I mean, we need better healthy foods, and I mean now she's as skinny as anything. But so don't be afraid of eating. You and your kids some, some good fats. So the biggest. Oh, oops. <laughs> we went, sorry, I, this just keeps skipping on me. <laughs> um, so the most important fats that you want to incorporate in your diet are the omegas, and there's a couple of reasons why. 
So the omega-3s uh, help, they're polyunsaturated fat, fatty acids, and it just comes down to different types of fat of different bonds. I'm not going to go into the whole scientific thing about it, but that's, you can only get them from food. Your body can't produce them yourself. Um, so your body needs um, DHA, EPA, um, and ALA. The DHA and the EPA are the most important ones, and you can only get those through fish oil. Fish oil, krill oil, algae oil, only things you get them from. If you're a vegetarian and you don't do any, any fish oils or anything, you can use flaxseed oil, which has ALA. Now, the only problem with the flaxseed oil is that the ALA, only about 5% of it converts to DHA and EPA, so you're not getting as much omega out of it. Um, So people always say, you know, you take your fish oil capsules, you get those fish oil burps all day long. We all know what, we all know what we're talking about if you take them. Um, if you find a fish oil capsule that has, it's called Enteric Coated, um, E-N-T-E-R-I-C, there's actually a coating on it, um, it's a natural coating, that actually helps the fish oil bypass the stomach um, and into the small intestine where it's more alkaline and it will break down. So you won't get those fish oil burps. Uh, and natural factors, I know natural factors has a great one. That uses that. <laughs> so we all know what the, you know what those are. Uh, and then we have omega-6. Now, omega-6 is in most foods that you eat. Um, you've got your um, soybean oil, palm oil, canola oil, olive oil. Um, we have no problems getting omega-6. Um, the problem is we get too much omega-6. Omega-6 is, is a pathway for inflammation. And sometimes we need inflammation. You know, we sprain our ankle or something else happens, you need an inflammatory response to tell you something's wrong. The problem is we're getting way too much, <laughs> excuse me, way too much omega-6 creating chronic inflammation. The ideal ratio of omega-3 to 6 is 1 to 1. And nobody's, you're not going to get that through your diet. The average American diet has a ratio of 1 omega-3 to 40 omega-6, creating chronic inflammation. In your body. Uh, so cutting out, cutting back on the omega sixes, and adding those omega threes to your diet, whether it's through cold water fish. I know a lot of people have a too hard time eating fish, um, but if you eat cold water fish twice a week, and then you add the omega three supplements, uh, preferably fish oil, um, you'll notice a big difference in the inflammation in your body. And the inflammation is not in joints. Joints can be heart inflammation, skin inflammation, hormone balance. Most of most women who have hormone balances or are deficient in omega-3. Now that being said, the only omega-6, if you are having hormone issues with women in here, um, the evening primrose oil actually um, helps um, estrogen up the metabolism. So a evening primrose oil is an omega-6, it's a good omega-6, so taking that as well will help you with your estrogen metabolism. And that mean, meaning if you have like PMS or cramps or Going through early menopause or menopause, it will definitely help with the estrogen. Omega six, or three? omega six. Both of them, both of them will help. But adding the omega six, the evening primrose oil, will do specifically for women's health. And if you take it, um, you know, leading up to your, leading up to your period, those first few days, leading up, and you feel like you're just going to kill somebody. We've all been there. <laughs> you know, you just get that. I'm um, taking the omega six in large doses. Helps immediately. So let's tell you on the bottle, take one a day, take like six. <laughs> no, and it does. <laughs> it does. And then this is a natural pap for me. <laughs> so I'm telling you, this is a natural, the natural pap that I used to see in Canada. It's exactly what she told me she takes. Like one is like a regular, like regular dose. Yeah, and she's telling me, take six of those, because that's exactly what, and my husband appreciates it. <laughs> so the omega-6. But the omega-3, you want to take the omega-3s, and I said, if you're a woman, you probably want to add an evening primrose oil. So, okay. so, so, so. Yeah. These all have omega-6s. They're good, those that make, I mean, they're, they're, are, they're good. You don't want to cut back on them, but, but adding things, like if you're eating processed foods, really it's about the processed, <laughs> the processed foods, the crackers, the, the breads. They all have these canola oils and stuff in it. Um, so you want to just cut back on those. Add, but making sure that you are taking the omega-3s. Now, the other thing with the omega-3 fish oils, on the bottle, like a lot of them are like, they say a thousand milligrams fish oil. It's really not enough. So you need to take, ideally, you need to be taking like four to five thousand of those. So that's a lot Every of, day. that's a lot of, you know, because your body's so out of balance with the omega. Of the three? Of the, the three. Okay. No, of the three. Of the three. 
Um, the other thing too, you want to make sure though, if you have any, um, if you have any like bleeding issues or on like blood thinner medications or anything like that, you'd, you'd want to talk to your doctor first. You know about taking lots of omega three vitamins. Just to, you know, you don't want, you, you wouldn't want it to interfere with your medications and stuff. So. I think he's going to post this online, though, right? So if you don't, you're crazy taking notes, I'm sure yeah. you can go. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I'm just saying, like, over here, everyone's writing things really quick. Yeah. So one of the other better things you can do, and I know you hear this from Amy all the time, is sugar. Sugar, sugar, sugar. We all love sugar. <laughs> Whatever form it's in, carbs or chocolate or whichever. Um, one of the interesting things is with sugar, I was at, like, People are saying, you know, you're not born addicted to sugar, but I think we are in a way because when you're born, the fir your first food is your mom's milk or formula, and and that's a then that's a carbohydrate, right? There's actually a lot of sugar in it, so you're getting that, and then comes along your I don't remember I don't remember four or five months old, then your first food you're given is rice and fruit, so your first foods are carbohydrates, so your your body that's what you're now. Um, the problem is. Babies or kids are not. You actually don't fully develop your um, your en your enzymes to break down carbohydrates until you're two years old. So we're giving kids all these sugars up till two, but they actually aren't able to break them down and metabolize them correctly. So there's some, and it's there's lots of different you know, alternative thoughts on this. The Weston A. Price Foundation actually believes in not giving your kids any carbohydrates till they're two, and they actually they actually think you should be feeding them like <laughs> liver and when they're like four or five months old. So I know it's just, it's a totally opposite of what we all have got brought up with and, and said. But it does make, it makes some sense. If they can't break down those, you know, those starches until they're two, why are we overloading their bodies with them, you know, at such a young age? You know, and then, become, then they become addicted to it because we know how it is. And that brings me to the, the addiction part of it is that any kind of carbohydrate sugar that you eat, you all notice that you just instantly feel good. It's this like thing in your brain that says, you know, I really like, even if it's, kind of, so I'm looking at the time, even if it's like, you know, it's pasta or it's a candy bar or bread, like it just signals something in your brain that says, you know, this makes me feel really good. And then you want more. And I know I personally am like that. If I start eating one piece of bread, I need two pieces of bread. Then I need something else sweet afterwards because it's, I just, I keep, you know, you keep craving it. Um, and then the problem is that it triggers your insulin. So as soon as you eat sugar, your insulin is released. The more and more you eat, the more and more insulin your your body's producing. You, and insulin, ex, all that extra insulin, is stored as weight, stored as fat in your body. Um, and then extra insulin stored as fat also means excess estrogen for women. So a lot of more overweight people do have higher incidences of breast cancer because of the excess estrogen. So what? Can, so and now sugar also can cause any of these symptoms. Depression is a big one because it really alters your mood, your mood swings, go up and down with sugar. We're all the same. So, do you cut out sugar completely, carbs completely? No. Your body needs carbohydrates. And I think that's the other thing I keep seeing that people are afraid of eating carbs. If you're eating good quality carbs, if you're eating, I mean, you're eating like brown rice, like whole grains, brown rice, quinoa, uh, fruits of carb, you know, those are all, those are all good things to eat. In moderation, stuff so not eating them every single meal. What about stevia? Does that cause the same response? No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Stevia does not. Um, the other sweeteners, um, like aspartame, any of the other chemical sweeteners, can cause that. Uh, they say it doesn't, <laughs> but the, the other sweeteners can cause um, neurological reactions too. But not stevia. Stevia does not. It's natural. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Things like agave, maple, like maple syrup, honey, are still gonna cause sugar reactions in your body. So, I mean, they're not unhealthy. You just don't want to be substituting one sugar for another because it's still sugar. But if you're making like a, if you're making something, cooking something, I would probably use, um, like we'll, get, we'll add honey to things and cause the brown sugar, we we'll use maple syrup. Um, we've started doing um, the coconut sugar in some things. It makes things really dark. Um, and my kids are like, these look like healthy cookies. <laughs> you know, but it's just, you know, trying different things, trying different things out there. Um, and the other thing with the, the carbs too, you can try, um, instead of making things with grains to reduce the carbs, there's lots of al different alter alternatives out there, like the almond flour, the coconut flour, um, just to reduce the amount of carbs that you're getting. 
uh, or that, or it's actually just bad cards that you're getting. And depending on what plan you're on here, um, you know, what you're set up with, whether you're in what your body system's like. Some people are not having any carbs, or doing, like, and total paleo does not mean no carbs. <laughs> That's the thing, right? People are afraid of that. Um, other people need carbs in the morning. Sometimes people work out at night and need carbs after. So it's really what your body type is, what your workout schedule is um, to decide. What is good for after workout? Do you need carbs? You need, well, some carbs and protein, ideally. But again, it depends, what, how, depends how much you're working out, how heavy you're working out, different, different yeah, athletes. Workout, yeah. Yeah. Like, so. Yeah, the protein shake is a great option after. It's got a lot of good, like, it's got all your, I think, I like protein shakes because you can hide a lot of things in it. You know, you've got your fleshy things and you don't even want to know that's in there and you can put them in there. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> so the next line is, I always hear people say, I can't afford good food. I can't afford organic food. And it's terrible, like, you drive, when you're driving out there with your kids or just by yourself and you see, like, McDonald's advertising, like, burgers, or they have a dollar menu, you can feed your kid for, like, three dollars. You know, you wonder why people, that's why people go there. Because if you're on a really limited budget, it's a really cheap option for people, right? They don't know any, it's, I can't afford, if I go buy a smoothie, it's going to be six dollars. But if I buy them a burger, fries, and a Coke, it's going to be three dollars. People make that, make that decision. You know, I, if it's eating out, if you're constantly eating out, you're spending a lot more than if you're making food at home. And I'm a big fan of making food at home because you know exactly what goes into what you're eating. And I grew up that way. We never got to eat out. I thought it was the poor child that never got to eat out. But I didn't realize it's, it's just we were poor growing up. Yeah, my parents, my parents are from England, and they just it just wasn't part of. There's at that time there's no it just wasn't fast food there. So we just my mom never made like it was a treat if we ever got to go to McDonald's. Now I'm thinking. It's not a treat if you get to go to McDonald's, <laughs> you know, it'd be horrible. Uh, so organic is probably, I mean, it's always the best way to go if you can, because there's no herbicides, pesticides, they're not genetically modified, there's no growth hormones, antibiotics um, in the food. Uh, you can source locally and buy in bulk. There's lots of places out there that you can buy in bulk. It's a big expense up front, but it makes it a lot cheaper. Even if you're meat, if you found, um, if you found a ranch, I know there's quite a few of them in Texas that you can buy, if you're buying, you know, buying beef, you can buy a side of beef. <laughs> it sounds terrible, doesn't it? But it's, it's a lot cheaper. Um, if anything, we would say buy the dirty dozen organically. Those are the ones, and Amy's got a list already on the website, so I didn't print it off, um, that have the most pesticides in them. Strawberries being a big one. So if you can find them, and it's not always whether you can afford them, but sometimes you can't even find them. It's really hard to find, and depending on the season, you know, finding things organic. Um, <laughs> Eating natural whole foods is going to be a lot cheaper than eating packaged foods. So you want to concentrate on the um, And we, we're lucky here. We have so many great supermarkets in this area that you can choose from for that. Um, also, shop the internet for organic natural food suppliers. I've come across some really great ones um, that you just buy like a $20 membership, like kind of like Costco. And they, have, they sell all these great things that reduce prices. And I've got a list of them here. Um, no, it's making your own household cleaners. Uh, so I know I like the Myers cleaner, which is all natural, but it's expensive. It's pretty expensive. But so uh, you know, buying some essential oils and finding your own recipes to make you know counter cleaners and stuff. You're doing yourself a lot of big favor by not having those chemicals in your house either, and the expense, you know, of buying. Them. <laughs> Sorry. The next big one. You ever, who reads labels? On things. Are you shocked? Yes. Absolutely shocked. I wish I'd, I forgot to read something this morning. So, food additives. I have a printout here. I printed them off. Actually, I don't know if I have enough, but I can give you more. Um, um, so, I'm not going to go through every one of them. The food additives are just you know, toxic to your system. And some of the big ones, um, <laughs> so the, the RBSD, that's the one that's found in meat, milk, cheese here in the US. Um, and it's something that they're ejecting the cattle with to make them grow quicker, and it causes problems with the cattle. And then you wonder why you're, there's so many incidents of, of cancer in kids now when they're drinking milk that's laced with growth hormone, although the FDA says it's not a problem. But also Monsanto, one of the biggest you know, suppliers of um, seeds and hormone, all those like things they eject cattle with, they sit on the board at the FDA. <laughs> so there's a lot of conflict there. You know, they say it's not a problem, but... Uh, 
The other thing I have a problem with is that the RBST and the preservatives, this DHA, DHA, they're banned in Canada, Europe, Japan, Australia, New Zealand. If these things are banned in other countries, <laughs> these are big Western countries, why are we allowing it here? I have a really big problem with that. I have a really big problem with that. I, you know, something, if they're banning it and the FDA here says, oh, it's perfectly safe, I'm not sure who I believe, to be honest. So those are things I would definitely look at. These things are found in everything. Um, even if you go to Whole Foods, surprisingly, my kids picked up, you know those pretzel crisps that are out right now that I don't even see those? My kids at Whole Foods have picked up a bag, they wanted them, I'm like, oh, and I was one of those, don't have time, just sure. I can't believe all the chemicals that were actually in it. You know, so you really have to look at it. But the regular one, the regular pretzel crisp, it's like the regular flavor has nothing in it, has like pretty much simple ingredients. The cheese flavor had like all these chemicals listed in it. Okay, so the regular one was like that. Yeah, the other one, I mean, it still had, it's still processed, but it still had, it didn't have. I know, and I was like, I was just, I was shocked. So you're looking at the same brand, has all these things. The other thing to look for is that things like MSG can be called different things in products. So it may, it may not say MSG, it may say like bottleized yeast extract, but if you've seen that one, that's MSG. So you really have to be um, wary, you know, of what of what you're buying. The artificial food color is another one. If your kid has any kind of attention hyperactivity disorders or anything, food coloring is a big one to cut out. And food coloring is in everything. Even a jar of pickles. If you have a jar, buy a jar of pickles. There's food coloring. There's yellow tartrazine in it. Unless you buy, I know why. Then if, unless you go to the deli and you get the. Um, What's the brand? Boar's Head. So actually, the refrigerated ones. There's no yellow tartrazine in it. They use actually turmeric. So, well, yeah. So I'm saying, but look, I mean, things that you don't think of, you know. And then I was shocked. My daughter told me this week at school that um, they had to replace mustard. They, they they can't have mustard in the cafeteria anymore. So mustard has like five ingredients in it. They're all. It's actually all natural because the sodium was too high. So they replaced it with an artificial version of mustard. Oh, wow. And I'm thinking, you'd rather give the kids chemicals. There's hardly any sodium in mustard, unless you're eating like squirting oh, it down, you know, gallons <laughs> of it. I was like, I'm just shocked. I mean, and they have artificial ketchup now too, because ketchup has sugar in it. Oh, and I'm thinking, we're just giving our kids the wrong things, you know. So just be aware. Read the labels. We almost done. This is sorry. Something is sorry. We only have a few minutes. I know. Right. So. So eliminating your post-sensitive foods, the way I, I'm going to go through this real quick. Uh, okay, yeah. girl, okay, I just like, I know I'm ready. <laughs> okay. Uh, processed food, you can just eliminating processed foods, the way I looked at it too is all these chemicals you're putting in your body, your body is given a certain amount of enzymes, um, natural enzymes in nature, food has those enzymes, so it, it naturally fits together like a puzzle and you can break them down. As soon as you eat things that are out of their natural form, your body doesn't know what to do with it. It actually is like creates free radicals, it creates cancer cells because it just sits there and it's like, I don't know what to do. So I always like that as a puzzle piece. You know, the more natural in its natural form it is, the more your body's gonna know what to do with it. <laughs> so eating whole foods. Say no more about that. And doesn't it just look better? Eating that than those other package food, the other package foods. A couple more slides, just keep on thing. This is the mindful eating. People are always in such a rush. We have such a busy, chaotic life. We work, we have kids, we come to the gym, we're all trying, we're always trying to eat in a rush. The problem is when we're eating and we're not sitting down to eat, all of our energy is not going to our digestion. Our energy is going to writing something for the kids or doing this or doing that. So Sitting down to eat is the biggest thing. If you can even take 10 minutes just to sit and concentrate on what you're eating, it'll make a big difference. Um, also, having a good selection of brightly colored food on your plate makes a huge difference to your mind. If you're sitting there with a plate of mushy greens, you're like, Ooh. you know, you're not gonna, you're not gonna, it's not gonna be, in your mind, you're not gonna be happy with that. So making sure there's <laughs> lots of good quality, bright colored things on your plate, easy to do. Um, eat with family, eat with friends. Uh, enjoy and savor each bite, and get to the bottom of why you eat certain things. I know there's certain things people grew up with. The Diet Coke makes them feel good because they've had it since they were a kid. Um, things like me, I, I like coffee, but I can't eat drink coffee in the afternoon because I associate it with having a cookie. Don't know why. 
I don't know, coffee cooking in the afternoon. So now I know I can't have a coffee in the afternoon <laughs> because it's just association. <laughs> it's association. So you get to the bottom of why you're eating certain things. Stress. Stress is a big one. It's a fight or flight syndrome, which you need, which you needed because you know when you're actually in the case, an emergency case where you need, you know, your physical stress takes takes over. Problem is when we're constantly in that state of stress, we raise our cortisol levels. A cort raise cortisol level over a long period of time equals weight gain, constant weight gain. Um, in survival mode, optimal amounts of cortisol can be life-saving because it actually diverts all your energy <laughs> to, to life-saving and it, it shuts, actually shuts down your like endocrine system, your digestive system. All your energy is going there. So if you're constantly in that state of, of stress, Rest your, you know, you're shutting down all these body systems at the same time. Plus, it's depressing your immune function, it's increasing your insulin levels, decreasing your libido, skin problems, obesity. And bottom line is stress is about how you react to a situation as well. Everyone's got different stresses. It's how to so think about how you react to it, how you can change your reaction to stress. That will help. Most of us don't get enough sleep at night. Sadly, because we either just don't go to bed on early enough or we just, we just can't sleep. These are some suggestions on how to get enough sleep. Um, going to bed at the same time every night, it's not always possible, but try. Uh, eliminating any stimulant beverages like caffeine, any time from, I would say, from noon on, personally, <laughs> me personally. Uh, watching TV before bed, some people think it's relaxing, but sometimes it just keeps your mind going too quickly. Um, working out really excessively before bed, if you're going straight to bed, you can't shut down. Um, you can use like lavender oils and stuff, your, like in your sheets or your bath, that helps. Uh, if you have a sleep before bed, if you're hungry before bed, you need something that contains tryptophan, which actually will help you reduce sleep. Uh, melatonin, people are always saying, well, I take melatonin, but it doesn't work. Melatonin only works if you're deficient in melatonin. It doesn't always, some people are like, why isn't it working for me? It's because you're not deficient in it, so you need to look at what other reasons you can't sleep. And then, you know, herbs and essential oils can always help these things too. So what, you're like, what do I eat? I just told you, you can't eat this, you can't eat that. So, I mean, I just made a list, you know, organic chicken, turkey, beef, salmon, wild-caught fish. Um, watch on the fish when you go to the supermarket. If it's farmed fish, it's usually given antibiotics and it's injected with food dye. Like salmon, like farmed salmon is actually injected with food dye to make it pink. Because natural salmon eats krill, right, and that makes it that color. But if it's farmed, it doesn't have that opportunity. I know all these things that you just think, doing so well, I'm eating salmon, but it's farm salmon. <laughs> um, you can try almond butter instead of like peanut butter. Although peanut butter, if it's in a natural form, you know, can be, it's okay. It's just like the skippy peanut butter that's full of sugar and hydrogenated oils as well. Um, raw nut seeds, real mix, nitrate free jerky. My kids love eating, well, my son loves eating jerk, beef jerky instead of, so I've got them off the goldfish crackers onto eating more protein based snacks. Um, fresh fruits, whole grains. Um, unsweetened almond milk or coconut milk, rice milk, whichever. Um, trying a new vegetable each week always helps. And I, make, I don't deprive my kids of cookies, but they have to make them themselves. We don't buy any packaged cookies because there's just so many ingredients and bad ingredients in it. My daughter loves to bake, so we're always trying new things. So at least you know that exactly what they're doing. <laughs> so, you know, there's real flour or real we tried almond flour or coconut flour. <laughs> there's real butter in them, you know, different types of sugar. You can still make, you can still give them those treats, but Make them yourself. So, I didn't have the time for this, but I, I made one more quick slide because everyone's talking about this bulletproof coffee. <laughs> and if, if, has anyone not heard of bulletproof coffee? Because it, it's like all over. It's all over the news. Well, I'm just gonna, this is just a warning on it. So everyone gives you this incredible energy. It's two cups of coffee with two tablespoons of like basically coconut oil. This is what they're putting in. Two tablespoons of grass-fed butter. 441 calories of fat. And so the idea was that people are doing this for energy, and it's supposed to just it's just giving them energy in the morning as a meal replacement. But people aren't using it as a meal replacement. They're having it instead of what they put into their normal coffee. That's an extra 441 calories, 51 grams of fat. Now, if you have gallbladder issues, uh, thyroid issues, anything, you're not doing your body any good by drinking this in the morning. Yeah. So I'm just you know people. So it's just all over the news. It's episodes. But is it You're better off having like a nice clear omega three rich egg. Fried in coconut oil with an apple. At least you're getting 421 calories, 
you've got protein, you've got your carbs, you've got magnesium, manganese, vitamins in it, you're better off. Is it as bad as alcohol? I'm going to put it to one tablespoon of it, but I'm going to smell the oil. Yeah, I mean, just look at, look at the calorie. Yeah. But I'm just saying, if you're having the butter instead of putting cream in it, it's really not a lot of difference. The grass might better probably a little better. But that's just, people don't really, it's like when you go to Starbucks and people order. <laughs> it is a, that people go to Starbucks and they get like whatever the frappuccino and realize they don't realize there's 550 calories and like you know 60 grams of sugar in a frappuccino. Let's go. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, so just be wary of like these fads. You have all these, you know, all these actresses on TV going, yeah, I have my bulletproof coffee in the morning and stuff. And so I started reading about it. I'm like, well, it sounds interesting, but when you actually break it down, there's really not a lot of nutrition in it. So. Yeah. Yeah, the keto, and then, yeah, it's high fat. The same people who have like gallbladder issues, then having that much fat all at once is going to cause problems. If you have thyroid issues, having like coffee is going to cause problems. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, no, it's just all together. Anyway, that's why it's just all over the news. So I thought I would just include. I know include a big slide and just think about what you're what you're eating. So. Uh, so that's the end of my presentation. I know we kind of went through things really quickly because I knew we didn't have a whole lot of time. So, but if anyone has any questions, like I'm happy to stick around and answer them on a personal level. Um, I am starting to do just some consulting work here. So if anyone um, is interested, even in like a 15 minute free consultation, um, Amy just has some forms. Or I also sent out, um, I've been working with some clients and I sent out a weekly email, just different nutritional advice, different nutritional things. Um, questions that you have. So if anyone's just interested in getting the weekly email, uh, we also have a sign up for that. So. Okay. Now go and enjoy your coffee. <laughs> Thank you, Kathy. You're welcome. <laughs> so. <laughs> I don't do a lot of talking in the morning, as you know. <laughs> I have people in the morning, I don't talk a lot.